Hello and welcome to my studio. My name is Svetlana and today I will be trying to paint a green bottle. I have a daylight uh, coming from my window and it's cool light because it's snowing outside and it's very cloudy. So my shadows are going to be a little bit warm and uh, the light falling on the bottle is going to be cool. So I pre-mix some paints and I'm going to start from probably the darkest values. I already pre-toned my canvas and I'm painting with big brushes at this point. You know when you paint glass you really paint it just as you see it and you can paint it a little bit warmer and a little bit darker than you see it in background but in most cases it's just similar to what you see in the background just with some little distortions so I'm mixing a little bit of green and a little bit of brown at this point because I have a shadow falling just behind this bottle So in the areas where the glass turns, it's a little bit darker. So I paint in the same way, a little bit darker. And also at this point, I want to put my cast shadow from the bottle. So I'm mixing again a little bit of brown and a little bit of blue and it's ultramarine blue and it's uh, burnt sienna but also I can do a little bit of transparent oxide brown it's just I have burnt sienna on my palette at the moment so the cast shadow is because it's a window daylight so the cast shadow is not very dark like it would be with artificial light but it's still relatively dark in comparison with the uh, window, sorry, with the uh, tabletop and the actual glass. I know that lots of artists saying that it's hard to talk when you paint and now I can see it that it's true. It's hard to talk and because this is the most important moment when you're trying to focus and try to put your values right while your eye is fresh. So I'm doing a little bit of tabletop at the same time just to see how it's all going to work. My tabletop is a light wooden board but because it's a cool light it has some kind of cool hints in it. Cost shadow is going to be very blurred because it's just a shadow it's not the contour of the so the edges, I mean, it's not going to be blurred, but the edges of that shadow is going to be softer than the actual subject. I'm painting with oil paints and um, I will show probably my paints at the end. But at this point, I'm just trying to set up the whole atmosphere and background in comparison, background values in comparison to the bottle. So there is a fold here on the fabric that is the background, so it's going to be relatively dark as well. So I'm trying to get all my darkest spots, even though it's a white material, it looks pretty dark and cool, especially the part that's very close to the window. 
and then it gro gradually gets a little bit lighter. So at this point, I'm trying to get the right value for that material. And because I'm painting on primed acrylic board, the brush I'm using is synthetic, could be bristle. I like bristle brushes as well. But for purpose of this painting, I'm doing it very, I'm doing it on acrylic prime board, so synthetic brush works for me better in this case. I think I got all the darkest values right at this point. this point you can see that until I put light or highlight it looks very flat and that's okay because once the dogs are in we can start gradually to add light the lightest one of the lightest spots because the light goes through this portal and at the same time you can see some transparent background as well and actually I forgot to lift it a little bit higher the tabletop has to go a little bit higher Here at the back, where the shadow finishes, it's a little bit lighter. So now I can do a little bit more of lighter background at the back of this bottle. I'm going to switch to bristle brush at this point while I'm doing background because it will go easy and smoother. I want to do a very thin layer of the paint for the background specifically because this is not the main subject. The main subject is the bottle. So the light behind the bottle on the white is a little bit warmer and a little bit lighter in this particular place. So I'm going to kind of soften it a little. Even though it's a light background, it changes with the temperature. Sorry, if it's a light background, it changes with the temperature of the light. So in this particular case, the further it is from the window, the little warmer and lighter it is. So I have to show that, but it's not too light. So you have to show like slight variations on the white of warm and cool, as you see it. Plus, I have a little bit of reflection of the bottle. And that I know that you don't see my actual 
uh, setup and I will show it in the end because this is a, just a small trial video and I just wanted to see how it's going to work so this is my reflection of the bottle that I have and I'm going to slightly like with very soft touches to bring it in and now I'm going to finish this background brush is definitely better on the acrylic primed board. Normally I paint a lot on oil primed boards but I just decided for the purpose of exercise use just a very simple board that I had in my drawer. And what is that paint? I'm trying to squint because this way I can see values better and I can see that my white background is not as white as it seems normally on a white. And I keep comparing it to tabletop as well. Tabletop is lighter because it absorbs more light that falls on it. And it's also warmer. It's a light warm color of the board that I have here. But like I said, that the same as background. It has cool and warm notes. It's predominantly warm, but it has cool and warm in it. The same as background has cool and warm in it. take a little bit smaller brush and this time it's a flat synthetic brush like this I should have shown my previous brush bristle brush and my previous synthetic brush so I'm trying to work with big brushes to start from because it's much easier to put the shapes right first and it's also easier not to get caught into details that you don't need at this point because depending on how it goes you will decide in the end how much detail you really want to put for this particular so now I'm going to refine a little bit my original painting now I have all the values right in there and the colors as well start adding and building the paint in places where I need so continue building the paint so my ellipses at the top and at the bottom should be about the same because it's the same kind of ellipse goes all the way at the bottom and all the way at the top so I have slight highlight here on the table as well produced by the bottle so I'm going to put that one as well through reflected lights And I'm going to work the shadow a little softer. And let's see what I'll do. My bottle has a little bit of edges that come out. So I'm trying to get those edges correctly in. Not as much as the back edge, but as the front edge. And it doesn't have to be exactly right, right? It just 
it's oil paint so and it's not a drawing so as long as it goes and shows the shape right that should be enough because it creates the illusion of the shape and form and now I start building my first lights on the tip of the bottle so and I'm coming around it with paint with this background so to get a more defined shape So now I'll start going through the bottle and see where are the lightest lights and where are the main highlights. So in this particular case you can see one on one side and the other on the other side. And then there is light going through the neck of the bottle as well. And because goes through the glass so all the lights get slightly deformed and we can see that some of them are blue some of them green I'm not using too much white at this point even though I'm going through already like lightest area it's still light mixed with um, yellow and yellow green because I want to reserve my best lights for whichever highlights I'm going to put in the very end and then that's when the bottle will really pop out and I'm trying to be soft on the glass because it's glass and it has Kind of soft edges inside it. There's a little highlight here as well, and I think my highlights are going to be cool that I have a cool light coming from the window so there is a the bottom is thick but there is this little again reflected light going through the bottom and it's not completely dark so there is some lighter areas here as well and now I'm going to build my highlights so I'm going to add a touch of blue in my highlights when I'm going to put them because it has like this window shape kind of highlight coming from the window and it's a very cool light There are some distortions on the bottom as well. A little light coming this way as well. Painting glass is always different because I don't think there is any similar, similar glass. It's always different because 
the lights are different, the reflections and all kinds of different external factors affected. So at this point the bottle started looking a little bit like a bottle. So there is a little highlight here at the bottom and an increased highlight here. There is kind of a glow coming through here as well, but I'm just trying not to do too much of it. This is a change of the shape, and this one catches lots of light in the place where it changes. So it doesn't catch lots of light, but it kind of starts changing the form. And it gets more light. So as I go, I correct again the shape because I lost some of it, but I'm not going to be very precise with it. And I put the wrong color on the wrong pile, but that's okay. I'm going to change it. Lost my little highlight. So at this point, I just almost done, really. I just want to wanted to do a quick drawing of the glass bottle, and just to show and see if anyone interested, and if you want me to continue to post some simple. drawings and paintings, I can do that on a regular basis. I understand how hard it is to talk for some artists while they're painting, because you're trying to focus and you start losing the track of what you're saying. And I kind of understand it now. It's easier said than done, but we'll see. This is my first trial. If it was helpful for someone, and I probably didn't explain too much how to paint, but I just wanted to see how the whole video will work and if I'm heard on the microphone and what other technical things I need to change. So if you want to change things or you have any suggestions, let me know. I know that I still have lots to do, but any comments and suggestions will be welcome too. So this glass needs to be a little thicker. I just noticed now on the sides the squid. I see a lot of thickness coming on that side. And we'll do the same here. It's probably not the perfect bottle, but the idea was just to show how just paying attention to the glass you can really create illusion of the glass bottle and transparency. So hopefully that worked. Actually glass is one of my favorite things to paint and flowers is another thing that I like to paint. So I paint lots of flowers most of the time but I know that I have to work on my drawings and my shapes so that's why I challenge myself. 
like to do it more often. So at this point, I'm going to think to lighten a little bit tabletop. Yeah. So I'm using okra, yellow okra, and some white just to make it a little bit more. And then I'm using some Vensilin as well, and I lost my bottle of wine. So I'm going to correct the bottle as well. And I think I'm going to correct the edges over here. Actually, did everything with flat brush. I could have done probably with a smaller brush, but again, for the purpose of this exercise, I don't think it's necessary. And I need to reduce my light here down a little. I'm going to just do a little bit of background correction adjustment, and I think I'm almost done. As you can see, this board, of course, wasn't perfect. It was carved at Home Depot and primed by me. And I have much better boards, but I just thought I'll use these for a small painting. And I'm also going to do a little bit more dark here. And now I'm going to have a look from step back and see what else I can add or fix on this bottle. So I think this light goes all the way actually through the bottle and this dark will be a little darker but I don't want to make it too dark. This one kind of comes through here. Um, there's a little bit of light going that way. A little bit more dark I need to put back here. Just a little. Because I can see kind of reflecting in here and I don't have microphone yet so I just was thinking if these things are going to work then I'll get microphone and start paying more attention to what I'm saying and what I'm doing but I guess you have to train yourself a little thing for artists not to overwork or not to spoil what they already did so I think I should might be I should stop at this point and stop playing with it because you can always find something new some little reflections in the glass but if what you already put is enough then you should probably stop because otherwise it will be already not glass so the only thing I'm thinking Try to make a little bit more darker white and correct my shape on this side. Okay, and uh, I just noticed a little bit of brown and blue in the reflection here. So squinting is one of the main things that lots of artists forget to do, and me. And that's why sometimes the values go a little bit off. So 
so I'm going to fix that part as well. So where my tabletop finishes, there is that edge and behind that edge where reflection goes, I should really kind of add a little bit more shadow of that I see. And I think at this point I will say it's done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just show what paints I used because I couldn't do it while I was painting. But I want you to see my palette and also the photograph and the close approach of what I painted. So Originally, I primed my board actually with a uh, slight wash of burnt sienna, so I could see the valleys better, especially like I'm painting on white background. And also, here is my palette. So this is white, two yellows, uh, yellow ochre as well, some orange, uh, brown, burnt sienna some greens and some of my old paints left from my previous painting, ultramarine and uh, really what I used in this particular painting was white, it was cut yellow deep, cut yellow light, yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, phthalo turquoise, this is a very strong greenish, bluish, I don't even know if it's a green or blue more in it, but it's very cool. So it very works well for in mix with yellows for glass and ultramarine blue. And here is my setup. This is my bottle. So if you enjoyed this or if you at least think that I should continue, just let me know and I'll appreciate any feedback on this.